everybody, and welcome to the Iowan Adventures, a world created and ruled by the Fae. I'm Jessica, also known as I Sneeze Stars online in places like TikTok and Instagram, and I will be your shenanigan sovereign. Uh, quickly, the shows that we have on the channel, obviously tonight, the Iowan Adventures. Tomorrow night, we have uh, the State of the Union, a Shadowrun campaign at 7.30 p.m. EST by Cottlesworth. Um, Thursday nights, we have The Lost Continent at 9 p.m. EST by Mr. Markham. And Friday nights, we have The Legends of Kralis at 10.30 p.m. EST, a TTRPG created and GM'd by Talarius Game Master. And Saturday nights, currently, we have the uh, all-girl mini campaign called The Moonstone Matriarchy at 9 p.m. EST, GM'd by myself. Um, don't forget to follow us on our TikTok or uh, join our Discord or YouTube and uh, Daniel. And Daniel. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Daniel. You can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places. Tonight, I will be playing Damascus Silver, the half-elf bard warlock, who is in super stealthy spy mode, following a creepy lady who don't ain't going to see him because he's so damn sneaky. So sneaky. And my partner in stealth, Caro. <laughs> yes, I am Caro. I am uh, at Imaginary Caro on TikTok, and I will be playing Gilly Ghislaine, the Water Genasi Barbarian, who is currently sneaking around like Kronk in the Emperor's New Groove. Oh my god, I love it. James? <laughs> I am getting over the thought of Caro making their own theme song. <laughs> 100% happy. <laughs> yes. Uh, but hi, Internet. I'm James. Uh, I like to go by Mazrix or Mazrix24, depending on where you find me. Uh, most notably, probably uh, our Dean Denial Discord, which link has already been dropped in chat because somebody's amazing. I didn't see who did it. But also uh, TikTok, where I like to post positive comments on people's things like, good job, or that was fantastic. Or can you do that again? Um, big fan of everybody, always. Uh, tonight, I will be hopefully playing <clears throat> Art of Dezark, our variant human Circle of Stars druid. Uh, however, depending on fate, I might also be Larian Arbor, the uh, smarmy, smart-talking storm sorcerer that uh, the soul shares a body with him. So stay tuned to see what happens in the the real life, not quite real life, imaginary real life, skip, dream, skip, whatever. It's fun. Hang out with us. Uh, take it away, Jess. So, last time in AA, episode 68, Letting Go. The party made a pit stop at the Eldest Druid's place, where Guy Arbor, Guy, Guy Arbor, I always do that, uh, Rev's dad was just exiting. They exchanged some spicy words with Arev flexing some serious backbone. Inside the druid's lair, they stumbled upon a dying and seen arbor, getting some questionable TLC from Roy's mom, Esme, a seemingly sweet blind lady. But guess what? She was secretly giving and seen a one-way ticket to the afterlife. After a heated argument, Rev got the memo to let the eldest druid do her thing and headed over to Wouldn't It Be Nice broth brothel. <laughs> Sorry, words. Um, team Gilly, Damascus, and Faza chased after Esme, while Rev and Winter set course for the brothel. Drama, intrigue, and split paths. Just another day adventuring. So, you guys have decided to split the party. You are at the Eldest Druids, probably just outside. Is there anything that you are doing before you head off in each direction? Do we have uh, do we have our communications open in whatever way we can? Yeah, yeah, Beza yes. is our CB radio. Okay. <laughs> I I have a feeling that like based based off of what happened with like the timing of you know a, a rev being like go get her like do not let her escape and all of you sort of listening and taking off um 
I don't a rev probably won't be able to be interacting with like the four of you because he'd be in the middle of the conversation with the eldest druid yeah it's like a there's like a couple minute head start for them so yes what's winter doing uh winter did not go with you he hung back he's not in the room with the him with a rev and the eldest druid but he did wait outside uh, when he watched everyone run off, he was like, I don't want to leave a rev by himself. Probably smart. Uh, not completely yeah. bad. Damascus yeah. is sneaky, sneaky behind creepy lady. Okay, roll me uh, stealth checks, everyone. Should I all? Yeah. <laughs> everyone. Uh, stealth, stealth. G- I, I'd like to give Gilly a bardic because I feel like she might need it. No, no, don't give it to me. I just rolled a net 20. Never mind. Perfect. I'll take it back. Gilly, regardless Yay. of the fact that she is singing her own cronk, uh, you know, song, um, somehow manages to make it sound like bird calls and is blended into a tree. What do you thought? This enhances it. It just She's managing it. to do like noise, active noise cancellation. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 18 for Damascus and 15 for Faiza. Okay, yeah. You guys pass. You are, you see Esme using her guide bird and her cane to walk with her guards away from this, uh, from this tree. And you follow. They walk down the busy Thawne Street, the place bustling. Uh, You notice um, people make room for her. They nod, not that she can see it, Uh, but the guards are telling her, oh, you've passed this person, you've passed this person, right? Um, Not that she can see it, quote unquote, because the bird definitely does see it. Um, But she plays it up really well. After a couple of streets, she waves the guards away. And you continue following her? Yeah? Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, is there anything that you are doing as you follow her? Uh, you know what? Let's throw some spells at the problem. Okay. Um, I would like to try detect thoughts on her. Detect thoughts. Okay. What you think? Fa- is there a, is there a range with that? How far? How close are you to her? Uh, that is a good question. It is. Uh, where did it go? Because I know I have it. There it is. Uh, thirty feet. Thirty feet. Are you? So you're within thirty feet of her? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> What's the matter? Hey, I'm, I'm double checking something. <laughs> And spell, careful spell, quick spell. Damn, yeah, she doesn't have extend. Okay, then yes, I'm within 30 feet of her. You're within 30 feet of her. Um, you hear rage, more or less. Her plan is so close to completion. Everything that was going her way. Nosy druids stupid children in her way roy is so useless what a letdown (laughs) you know just beration of like everyone and everything but herself her husband is beneath her the eldest druid is beneath her simply a means to an end okay is there anything that you're looking for specifically? Do you go deeper? You get a destination, maybe, just in case we lose her. Oh yeah. The big problem is if I go deeper, she knows that I'm reading her mind. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, but even if, whether she fails or succeeds, she knows I'm in maybe her head. Maybe the stealthiest idea. Yeah. So I think it's better uh, off destination. Just... She needs to get to the tree. That's what you hear. And Mm. she is heading in the direction 
of the Emerald Basin. Let me roll for something, sorry. Because her crow is still around or her raven is still circling and such. What is your... I think they have keen eyes, right? For perception. Probably. Getting vibes of the crow scene from Lord of the Rings. Right. <laughs> Raven stuff left by me. Totally looking this up. I did not have it open, apparently. Um, also that they can mimic things. That's great. Uh, wisdom. Okay, 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 okay. So. You're fine. Crow is not seeing you. Staying very close to Esme. As you guys follow her, she twists and turns and walks almost hurriedly towards the Emerald Basin. And then the tree opens. Any tree, just one that's close there. She walks into it and disappears. Is the tree closed now? It is. Oh dear. She cast she cast a uh, free stride. Or yes. And he's uh, gone. That's shit. Well <laughs> 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 unfortunate. You uh, followed. I walk up to the tree. <laughs> you yeah. knock on the tree. Poke. <laughs> Is there I anything don't. that you're, you're you you want to do? Do you want to roll investigation? Is it the secret knot like in the Princess Bride? You just got to find the right <laughs> one to press. Gilly <laughs> looks around for each knot and starts pressing them. I'm just banging on the tree. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. People are watching oh. you. Like, what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> uh, was... It is not. Mm. Well, I don't know how to walk into a tree. Should we, like, go find a reef, I guess? We know where he's going. Should we go to her house? Maybe she went to her house. Do we know where her house is? No. (laughs) (laughs) I guess... Uh... I, I, I would like to, like, take a look around and see if I can tell in any way where she might have... Yeah. Moved off to. I don't know what magical... spell she casts. I don't know how far it is, but. Is there like magical detritus left over after a spell is cast? Is that how anything works? <laughs> you want to give me Arcana? Sure. I assume I should not be doing that. You can definitely Open try. I, yeah, that's, maybe I'll get another nat 20, huh? I'd have to. Oh, 16. Not awful. 14. Better you beat me. Hey. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to say you've seen this at least once before, Gilly. Um, I grew up with wizards. Yeah, you've grown up you've grown up with wizards. It's not like there are druids all over the place. It's just that this is a very um it's one of the more pre- prestigious places for people to be. Um and she more or less cast transport via plants. So she went from one place to another. As long as she knows and has seen that plant before, she can go there. So okay, she so could I've, be anywhere. I've narrowed it down. <laughs> she can be anywhere with plants. <laughs> I look around at the jungle that we're in. <laughs> That's helpful. It's something. <laughs> All right. I guess. Great, guys. Good, great. We, uh, <laughs> team, team us. We did so <laughs> well. Um, only one of us could have counterspelled it. You know what, Damascus? <laughs> if only one of us was actually <laughs> useful. God, shut up. <laughs> Faze is gonna like stride over to the tree. You see her circle it, puff, and then walk off in the direction of the Emerald Basin just to get away from you. 
I forgot that she knew how to count a spell, honestly. I was just saying in general. <laughs> I wouldn't bring it up next time, probably. <laughs> probably for the best. Uh, we should keep up with her, I think. I ask us a follow face. <laughs> um, from there, we head back over to Arev. You've just had your conversation with the eldest druid, and we're told to go and see your daughter. What do you do? You've just, I believe you just like got to the door of your, of her room is where we called it. So I got to the door and I, I reach out and as I, I don't even like reach for the handle of the door at first. I, I reach out and I hesitate and my hands just scrape lightly on the oak wood and my palms go flat. And then I turn my head and I look left and right and then kind of remember to like look down and at first it's not really my eyes but i trail trail my hands down like the inner frame of the door and there are depressions and grooves and uh, uh, unnatural feelings to, to my fingers as i trail them along because they're tracing through different patterns that have been carved and traced into the uh, to to decorate the this room of the oldest druid until finally there's a familiar mark and I just pause and I look down and clumsily uh, <laughs> in, in in the way a, a child who has stolen a sharp implement from a parent, might run off and carve their name into something. There is just a rudimentary um, carving of a Rev's name just gouged into the, the, the bottom of the uh, doorframe. And as soon as he feels that, the the welling up of of emotion of realizing like i've just had this conversation with the eldest druid this being that has been there and around me my entire life who has basically said that this is it this is their time to die like let me die And Arev, with his palm pressed against his own name from 30 years ago, carved into the wood of this chamber, casts a final look over his shoulder at his family. Her eyes are closed. She knows you're still there. But she's resting. As tears begin to form in his eyes, he calls across the room and he just says, Thank you for everything. She opens, she, you see her open her eyes very very gently look at you and there's a small soft smile on her face I love you I love you more and he walks out you walk out shut the door and on the other side of it, leaning against the wall, is Winter. Uh, 
Hey. You okay? No. He hugs you. He go he walks over and just hugs you. Gathers you in his arms. I mean, we we have shit to do, right, Winter? Yeah, that doesn't mean there's not time for a hug. Yeah. I mean... You... You're pretty new at all of this. I mean, you're... you're awareness or consciousness or who you are it's it only has traces of the lives you made up what you are right you don't you don't have the full memory i don't know good hi okay I only say good because winter, it's going to be many, many long years, I hope, for you before you have to say goodbye to a family member. Until you have to maybe say goodbye to me someday. I'll come visit. It's different. It's not the same for me and you. I can come and see you in the afterlife. I am. But know that you will see her again. You've been there. You've seen. You've seen Beloth's world. So, Arev looks up at Winter's eyes. And as as he's saying this, as he's saying, like, you know, you've seen Bella's world, you'll see her again. He has this moment where he looks at the eyes, and as it's mentioned that he'll see her again, he let his eyes do that thing where they're like they dart away. And he just goes, Yeah, no, yeah, of course I'll see her again. That of course. And then he looks back. I'm going to see if he... can. That's a nat one. He just... Yeah, he's comforting you. He's doing the best he can. But, uh... <laughs> Sorry, real tears. <laughs> I okay. I just get rid of those. Um, uh, and then he... Reaches over and grips um the the back of the like the, the tricep area of Winter's arms, pleasantly noting how firm it is. Um, <laughs> and, and, boy. and then saying, "There's nothing left for me here, so we may as well move on." Okay, I'll. I'll follow you. But he he doesn't quite let you go. He keeps an arm around your shoulders as you walk out of the house. Uh, you head towards Wouldn't It Be Nice? I do, in fact, head towards Wouldn't It Be Nice. <laughs> ah, I love that so much. You make your way through the city. High up in the branches of the trees that there is a brothel called Wouldn't It Be Nice? An airy timber building with several blacked out glasses, uh, glass windows. Their air, the... Do you walk in when you get there? You... Immediate, like immediately no <laughs> this is this is a hesitation moment this is a hesitation moment so oh yeah 
there is a very it's unassuming the place that you go you know what it's it's got a little sign that says wouldn't it be nice and it's a very unassuming timber building it's got blacked out glasses window gla- glasses i keep saying that windows it is at the top of the ca- the trees in the canopies Winter. Yeah. There's no yes. chance you can you can like shape shift into a person, is there? I am a person. No, but like you, you can't like you couldn't just like be me for an hour and just like go in there for me. No, I don't have that ability. Shit. I kind of think that that also defeats the purpose of you going in there. I mean, does it, though? Do you not want to meet her? You don't have to. We don't have to be here. Yeah, we do. Like, I appreciate you telling me that we don't. I just... So much has happened... Since I've come home, and uh, y- you know, a-, a-, a lot of it, and this is going to sound absolutely mind breakingly not normal, but so much that has happened to me since I came home didn't even happen to me, it happened to the other soul that shares a body with me that has been piloting me around like a puppet while I've been barely conscious. And so now I'm here having had a conversation with the eldest druid that did not, sorry, I didn't fill you in. It didn't go well, Winter. And I'm the only. I could tell when you came out. But I like, but you don't know the details yet. No, I would. I didn't want to pry. And so I'm I'm like the only living creature that knows that conversation that just happened. And now I'm sitting on the doorstep and he gestures to wouldn't it wouldn't it be nice? He says, I, I'm on the doorstep of a brothel where I'm told that my illegitimate daughter that nobody told me that I had uh has been living with I just I'm assuming her mother, which was the young love of my life, who also disappeared mysteriously at some point. Um I it, it's been a rough few days. Uh, it's been a rough few days. Do you want me to go in first and, and look around? How how can I help you? I, <laughs> I I wish I knew. I I really really wish that I knew. You don't. You're not alone. I'm gonna be there with you. Winter looks like he's really floundering here. Uh, by the way, he's this is so over anything that he's ever had to deal with. And he's like, I don't know what to do. Where's Damascus? <laughs> Where's Faza? Like looking around for help. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Um. I I, I rolled a die to help me decide what I was going to do. Um. Arev. Reaches up to the same spot, like on the back of his arm, and kind of like squeezes it a few times and just says, Winter, I don't think there is anybody else in our group that I would have wanted on my, by my side more when I walk that through that door than you. 
there's a moment where you see just how much that sentence touched his heart. I'm I'm always going to be here for you, Rev. And hopefully I should always be here for you too. You know, until the whole short human life thing is over, but I mean there are ways around that. Yep, yeah, I think are there he is like turns and he like starts to like walk towards the building with a confidence that I don't think he deserves. But he's try he's trying to fake it until he makes it. You you hear behind you uh winter kind of catch up. And do you enter? Is there a bouncer? Can I just walk right in? You can just walk right in. That's dangerous. These people need some sort of bouncer. That's my first thing. My daughter's in this establishment. (laughs) There needs to be some security. (laughs) Excuse me. Hello. You walk in. No, I'm just, that wasn't canon. (laughs) No, I love everything about that. That's totally the thoughts going through your head. (laughs) Um, I love it. But I, I walk in. Inside is dimly lit, a dark, dark room, as you would say, very circular in built in its build. Uh, it's rich. There's a rich scent of perfume and incense in there. Uh, the inside of the building is decorated with red rugs and cozy booths with. Um, cushions kind of piled in heaps around the circular perimeter. Uh, rich emerald and peach colored curtains hang from the windows and also create little rooms, not rooms, but like little, uh, more, more, uh, privacy for guests as around these booths. Um, there are a few customers inside uh, chatting with staff. The There are stairs that lead upwards to, you assume, rooms. Uh, and you can tell you, just by the structure of most buildings in Thon that there are mul- probably multiple platforms that you can go up throughout this structure. Um When you walk in, give me a perception check. Sorry, I rolled the 16 plus something perception check. Uh, 21. 21. You hear dice. And I believe I remember or of having quite the dice addiction. As you look around the room, you see a handful of people that work there. Um, there is a beautiful female human woman in her late 30s with brown skin. She has long black hair, uh, wavy, with like a stripe of white that kind of goes through the top of it. Uh, she has bright blue eyes that have a soft glow to them um and full lips she's adorned with gold jewelry and beads through her hair she is wearing rich tight fitting a rich tight fitting purple dress and with like black and gold detailing on it uh there is a well-built red tiefling male he's you know in his early 20s his skin is a flawless ruby red his horns are the same color as his skin and his and they're smooth, like no ridges or anything like that. Um, they curve back over his skull and kind of point back and upwards. Uh, he has chin. He has black chin length hair and uh, it's shaved on the sides and kind of tied back into a ponytail. 
he has pointy ears and you see like a flash of fangs when he smiles at people. He wears gold eyeliner and has the same blue glowing eyes that the first woman you just saw has. Uh, you see another uh, human male or human male, human, they, them. They are very androgynous. Uh, in their mid twenties with cinnamon colored uh cinnamon colored freckled skin uh they have medium length brown hair that reaches just past their shoulders they wear red and white robes gold jewelry and makeup and have like this vibrant perfect white smile like hollywood giant it just lights up the whole their whole face and they have the same bright blue eyes another you see another red tiefling in his late 30s. He's lean. He's well-muscled and tall. He has an, an elegant and angular bone structure. Long black hair that cascades down his back. He has long red her uh, horns that go in like this S-curve. Um, and the same glowing blue eyes. He wears a translucent black shirt and tight trousers. He's adorned with an abundance of gold jewelry. And then, sitting behind a desk, playing a dice game of some sort, appears to be a young human female. In her late teens, she has tan skin, rosy cheeks, high cheekbones, and long, voluminous, brunette curly hair. Decorated with two large uh barrettes that are kind of made out of leaves they look like they make almost a, a tiara uh she has the same she has these hazel eyes that are starting to glint with that soft blue glow and she wears a long white gown she wears delicately burnished gold jewelry and has a little librette piercing what do you do? You've definitely immediately caught in the caught the eye of the woman with the the white streak in her hair, and she's watching you as you hover in the doorway. So the the first thing that I would want to do is after scanning all these individuals is see if there's anyone I immediately recognize. Would you like me, by the way, to post their images so that you can see what they look like? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. One second. And I will do that right now in our chat. That way you kind of get a better idea of them. Uh, desktop. Oops. Uh, I win. God, I put so many, I'm so organized, but I have to go through so many different, uh, what are those things called? like files to get to where I need to go. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think to have it open. Uh, here we go. There you go. They're all there for you to look at. Oh, perfect. I just choked on my water. <laughs> Drinking is hard, guys. I would say roll me no you uh, know what there so is, is one that one you would notice it, the the one with like the vol voluminous hair and like sort of the, that open white like half bolero thing in the gold chain is mm -hmm. is that the teen uh so uh the one with the like little tiara of crown of yeah. leaves yeah yes uh that's the teen she's where it's a little more high cut for that for her but, you know, I don't, I didn't have the image. That's just an idea of what she looks like. And she, uh, you've seen her quite a few times growing up. Give me, give me a history check to see what you remember. And I'll say with advantage. Okay. That's an advantage is going to help here. <laughs> Doing my best. Uh, so with advantage, 
My history is a 15. 15. Okay. You, you've you seen this girl quite a few times growing up. You remember her from being knee high, you know? Uh, she would... You've had these interactions with her where you would meet her and she had just dropped all of her stuff on the floor. And, you know, being you, you would pull over and help her pick them all up. And she would... And you would sit and talk with her for a little bit and she would say goodbye. Uh, you'd see her again where it just seems like her she had the worst luck with her shopping bags or something constantly bumping into her. Uh, and she would need your help with something and you would talk with her for a moment. Um, you remember her being, you know, not more than maybe five years old running over across like a playground to show you a picture that she drew and then just kind of run off. At some point, you probably asked her name. It's Cash. But you know her. And I'll say you most likely have met the woman with the white hair as well, because uh, you know that that's her guardian who takes care of her. Uh, her name is uh, Lindsay. And she's the also currently the one that is watching you hover in the the doorway you hear softly from Lindsay. you can come in anytime crazy um but I'm, I, I mean he's in a row uh but he takes a few steps down and there's sort of like a confused look on his face because he's looking around and he's looking at everybody and Lindsay is this everyone that's working tonight it is is there someone specific you are looking for give me an insight check on Lindsay sure Um, shoot. Uh, that is a 12. A 12? Um, she looks like she's expecting something from you, but you don't know what. No, Lindsay, I guess I am. Um, I wasn't really looking for anyone, per se more just wondering whether this was a slow night a slow night oh well you know it is only Tuesday um I have many people if you are interested she walks over to you And as she walks over, I just like I, I give her like a solid look straight at her eyes. They are a very they're they are glowing. There's magic there. It's, it's there's no way around that. And then I bend sort of slightly and I look down the side and very quizzically stare across the room and I go is that who I think it is? I mean that depends who do you think it is? Back over. Cash? You say that and the dice stops and rolls off the table for a second. Her head snaps up and she looks at you. Very big eyes, round, looking at you like uh, inside, actually. Inside. New person, inside. That is a critical failure. A critical failure. Maybe stunned? You're not sure? Uh... 
She waves. Really stiff. I, I don't know. I wave back. And then I go to Lindsay go, okay, I'm feeling really awkward. That's clearly not cash. Uh, I definitely, that's not the reaction I would have expected. Also, that is cash. Wait, what? That is cash. Okay, she but has like, grown quite a lot, has she not? Well, but like the last time I, I saw her, I swear we were just over by. So, you, you know that old guy who runs that like herb shop up top? Like she was like doing some sort of favor for him, like I don't know, like ten years ago, and she dropped everything everywhere. So like I, I helped her pick it all. Up. She's really clumsy. Did she get out of the clumsy face? Hey, Cash, did he get out of the clumsy phase? He, like, calls back across the bar. Another another two, like, dice kind of roll off the table. As she kind of hits it by accident. Um. Yes? <laughs> okay, cool. Good job. <clears throat> I Seriously, Rev. Rough. <laughs> Sorry, I have uh, I have Google down there. Um, <laughs> apparently, it responded to me talking for some reason. Google does that. Yeah, weird. <laughs> Sorry to startle anyone. I don't. I'm not haunted <laughs> that I know of. Oh, don't say that shit. Don't say that shit. Um. We're going to pause here and I'm going to jump back to the other two. You guys have wandered over to the Emerald Basin. Is there anything, I guess, let me describe what it looks like there. So the Emerald Basin is like under a sprawling canopy of lush, emerald leaves sparkling in the, the sunlight. Uh, there are rustling tree limbs that sway overhead, accompanied by like a chorus of chirps from birds nesting in the branches. Um, an abundance of exotic flowers in a variety of colors and shapes speckle the, the uh, grass around everything. And along the circumfer- circumference of the lake uh, a symphony of wildlife noises fill the air uh insects animals chatter in harmony um the sound of the water lapping against the boulders of the shorelines as waves from people fishing or jumping in there jumping in the water and swimming um can be heard bright green lily pads rim the calm waters. Uh, what what do you do? Let me see, Faiza. Yeah, she has made it to the waters and is kind of just chilling. She's like, I mean, wow, this is really pretty. Okay, so she doesn't seem super angry anymore. <laughs> no, she's just annoyed with Damascus a this little. This is a good detail to know. That's usual. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes the Damascus just pisses her off. In that case, oh, her. this is lovely. It really is. It's kind of magical. Oh. Nice place. Never was the one you for see the... big deep waters, but it's pretty. I love it. Do you think they let people swim in here? Well, I mean, Probably there's not. some kids over there. Hey. I get, you want to go for time. a swim? You can. We don't have time, do we? Do we need to, like, catch a goth grandma killer? I guess we don't really know how to do that. I mean, I don't know where she is, and we have to... I think our rev is busy. We could meet him at at the thing tonight. Move. Busy. Brothel. No, He's I don't think we should go to the brothel, Damascus. Mind. Do you <laughs> want to go to the brothel? <laughs> I thought that's where the, where a rev was going. Was yeah, but gonna... maybe we should let a rev have a moment with his brothel ch- brothel child, okay? He might need us. His support. brothel child. And there are... 
Shut out everyone. I don't know if she'd appreciate that, in Monica. <laughs> that sounds way worse. <laughs> right? <laughs> Out of context. Right? Oh. Um, listen. Not particularly flattering. Mm. Do you need to yeah. pay for sex, Damascus? Do you? No. And that okay. wasn't implying that we should. Then we don't need hey, to. It's nice to support it. small businesses. Do you need to go, Gilly? I'll catch it tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> All right, that's what I thought. Uh huh. Yeah. Once we figure out which one's Mazric's kid, Eric's kid. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's Mazric? <laughs> um, go ahead and let that situation sort itself out before we that, get that within a mile of the place. Deal. Gilly. Yes, ma'am. Perception. Mm. 11. Wait, 21. 21. 11. 21. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the math. That. <laughs> wow. Um, the song that this place is putting out is intoxicating to you. Mm. And almost the waters feel like they are calling to you, singing for you. Oh, guys. I gotta take a dip. I gotta do it. Do you mind? Head on, head on in. I ain't gonna you stop you. You wanna join me? Do y'all swim? Yeah, I can swim. You wanna we... join me? It sounds, uh, you know, it looks, seems great. All right. I'm down for a Get swim. Get on in there. So, I what take your paws out and I put him on top of my armor and be like, watch oh, yeah, our stuff. Like it. Don't let it, don't let anybody take it away. Immediately oh, oh. gets on the armor and lays down and starts rolling all over the cloth part of it so that uh, they spread their lovely fur on everything. Coating. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you okay, can this talk is my to, moment. to them. You can talk to them and you hear, gotta make it warm in their head. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make a little nest. A little nest for you. Do okay. you jump in, then... Gilly? This is your moment. Um, okay, so I assume that I've got, like, a configuration of my clothes that's, like, more swimmable than others, so I just sort of, like, disassemble whatever my outfit is to mm -hmm. my swimmable stuff, and then, and then I, I call out Otto, and I say, Otto, oh, oh, baby, Otto, I go for a swim! This okay, so Otto's here. ethereal <laughs> orange, uh, octopus bloops out and falls into the water. Huzzah! And then I jump in, yes. <laughs> you jump in before Damascus and Faiza can get there. Oh, absolutely. I'm in there. <laughs> you jump in and as you do, the moment that your body touches the water, you feel something grab your ankle and oh. pull. Maybe that you mean, oh God. <laughs> and you go down and get pulled fast and hard under the water miles almost it feels like you are getting drug almost out to sea oh dear as a basin can it I... is it is a it is attached to the ocean can i tell what it can i tell what's around my ankle can i see anything uh it looks like a strand of water almost hmm as you get yanked, your octopus has stuck its like stuck onto you and is like getting is like getting pulled behind you like a cape as it's like oh. flapping like no. It's got two tentacles just like wrapped around yeah. like <laughs> yeah, and then the rest of her just like flailing as you go down deep into the water. Oh, dear. Okay, so Gilly's um act Gilly's going to be acting under the assumption that this is a. Oh, is you know a thing? This seems like that sort of flavor. So we're just taking deep, calming breaths. We're box breathing while getting pulled around by the ankle. You're going with the flow. You're full. You're full like, oh, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Um, And within almost seconds, you are pulled so far away from everyone. 
and you're in the middle of almost nowhere. There's nothing but dark water all around you. And then a, a form materializes in front of you. Um, a stunning woman, luminous skin that mirrors like the hues of these tropical waters that you're in. Uh, her hair is flowing and it's the color of shimmering like seaweed and it cascades down her back. She's adorned with uh, delicate shells and these little sea pearls. So they're, they're a little misshapen. They're not like perfect, right? But they're also these like purpley colors um, and they glisten under like this warm water. She wears, you see, okay, give me, give me an, a perception check on her. Okay. No, you know what? We'll use the same one. You got a 21. She so has blue freckles bad. all over her face. Ooh. And a giant smile as you kind of come to a stop in front of her. You hear, ah! it has taken so long for you to come here. Uh, and she grabs oh, your face and gives you a giant kiss on the cheek. Oh, oh, oh I know <laughs> who you are. It makes one of us. No, of course you don't know who I am, do you? I am the Undestessa. I am. Undestessa. This is the the other ocean. Oh, so, okay. other ocean. I am Serafina. Writing in my notes. Oh, uh, oh. Okay, so I met another ocean recently. It's quite oh, nice to meet you. She, she kind of pinches your cheeks and like shakes your face a bit as you're saying this. She goes, oh, you're so cute. Of course you did. My sister. She did say a word. <laughs> She's not quite as uh, effusive as you are. No, my she experience. is a little frigid. <laughs> Her waters are cold, oh, cold ocean and, and she warm ocean. Just, yeah, <laughs> she's constantly cute. like okay. doing this to your face as you're talking. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I was told that you uh, wanted to meet me. Actually, um, of course I did. How dare you only stick to the seas and the other side, my sister's waters. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It's actually kind of hard to get here. <laughs> this was a big trip. It is. I don't know why you all decided to move so far away from me. Oh, uh, well, I, I assure you it runs wasn't on purpose. Mm -hmm. You um, I am. Uh, you're uh, uh, Serafina, right? You're the ocean. <laughs> Got that. You get a boop on the nose. Ah, clever girl. Clever, clever girl. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> Big kiss on the cheek again. She waits. She looks at you and she goes, oh, you are just so precious. Not a thought through those little those little eyes are there. Hey, I have an intelligent score of <laughs> um, look, I had a lot of good qualities. Oh, my little guppy. I'm not, I'm not maybe the brightest, uh, <laughs> but I make up with it, make up for it in other ways, I like to think. You know, Gee. I mean, not maybe as important ways is that, but uh, yeah, I do my best. She and circles around you in the water. It's almost like you almost twirl with her. Me. <laughs> Don't speak so negatively of yourself. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, positive self-talk. We've been working on that. So, um, well, if that's not what you meant, who are you exactly? Are you going to tell me? Or do I have to guess? 
Oh, I love a game. Yes. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> well, are you, are you like my guardian angel, kind of? Because of the whole, <laughs> oh, you know, a thing? I, I suppose that is one way to look at it. <laughs> Got it in one. Nice. Do you know nothing of your history, darling? My little puppy? My, okay. my little minnow? Okay, here's this again. Everybody keeps on telling me that I don't know anything about where I'm from, but I do know. Like, I know why the water genocide thing happened. It's because I have an ancient ancestor who was, uh, uh, shoot, what's it called? Um, mermaid type. Um, and that is, uh, it gets handed down through families, and then sometimes it, the genes appear. And, and so that's why, that, that's oh. why I'm like this. Oh, I know Precious. things. Precious! This is starting you... to feel a little condescending. She boops her nose she a little She didn't say again. that out loud. <laughs> she boops her nose a little again and goes, you're mine. You are of me, child. Oh! Wait, do you mean, so like, my mermaid people came from this ocean? You see her eyes kind of roll. No. You are related to me. I am your grandmother. Well, Great, 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 great. Oh, <laughs> well, um, <laughs> well, it's very nice to meet you. I'm sorry I haven't visited before. I didn't know you existed. Uh, I can forgive you if you promise to come and see me again. I absolutely will. <laughs> I'll bring cookies or something. <laughs> you see you see her like this booming laugh comes out of her and like the water almost seems to react to it there are bubbles that float along and like appear and then pop underneath the water <laughs> pop, 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 pop. well uh okay so great 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 so you're like I don't want to say old, but you're <laughs> <laughs> you've been around for quite some time, I assume. Almost since the beginning of your latest era. Huh. Yes. How do you know about me? I've watched all of my children. The are there more? No, not anymore. Oh. Many of you have faded away. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry about that. Did you get to meet them? Not so much. You moved right. away to the other side, and you don't travel anymore. Oh, like like all of us in general? Hmm. Because My people daughter... don't sail anymore. Yes. Because of all the terrifying monsters. Yes. But you're right. always safe, so I don't know why it's a problem. It's true. Yeah, I've had great luck. I'm not really... Well, I was going to say I don't really know what people are on about, but I do because I've seen a lot of Krakens and shit. But uh, yeah, thank you um, if, you're, if you've had a part in protecting me all these years. I'm very appreciative. You are of the ocean. You are of the water. You are always safe here. Oh. In every it like, water. It's like a default thing? Well, I mean, the river can be capricious. Mm. But... Yeah, I met some nasty little critters in a river. Or didn't did bypass some nasty little critters in a river recently. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, in anything that is salt water, 
you are safe. Maybe a little less so in the sea. She is a bitch. Yeah, yeah, you know, we've hit our spits. Um, but I'm still here. So, okay. So, you're this ocean. Hmm. And then I have the other ocean in my bedroom. And then, as you know, it is like all of the oceans. Yes. And Mother. she's kind of my boss currently. She's your great grandmother. Oh, I didn't know we were also related. Mm. Darling, sweetheart, my little minnow. <laughs> if I am, if you are of my line, would you not be of theirs? Yeah, that makes sense. I just hadn't thought of it. Uh, <laughs> I feel a bit weird about some of the things I was thinking about her. Never mind. I'm gonna uh, just put that out of my mind forever. So... <laughs> Sorry, this is so strange to get used to. Because I've, I've got a family at home um, that I know about. And, you know, they're great and everything. Um, but, well, well, all the water stuff was always quite separate, sort of, from my regular family. So I've got like a, like a, a water family too, I guess. Of course. You would have known more if you ha hadn't moved so far. Not that you did, darling Minnow. Yeah, I've always lived in the same place. <sighs> my child did quite get angry with me in the beginning, and my little Marina left to the other oh. side. <clears throat> so, wait. Hey Jess. <laughs> yeah. What was the name of the other ocean I met? Because I forgot. Uh, you met, I believe. Oh, gotta go get the name because I don't have them off the mm, memorized. Fair enough. You, have you met names. the. So you're talking to the Andas right now. Um, okay. But you met, and I'm wondering if I put her up. Please, for the love of God, have let me put her up. It's I in my not. notes somewhere if I need to look for it. One sec. I got. I love how unprepared I am for this. Uh, Araya? Wait. Araya, the Profundo Ocean Archipelago. The Profundo. So it would be the Profundo. That's the one that I met. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know who Marina is. No, you don't. Okay. Marina, she says, is her daughter. It, okay. Marina. So she's also related to me. But I've never met her either. But she's not here anymore. Oh, like she, like she died? No. Like she started a family on the other side of the world and then decided to go and live with her father oh. on another plane of existence. Oh. God, I'm starting to sound like the other people I know. Okay, I'm getting complicated. Uh <laughs> well, um, I suppose... Should I send your regards to my family when I see them? Or are they if not you related? Like. Are they not? Yeah. Are they related to you? I think sort your of. father is. Oh, right. Right, okay. Well, I'll tell dear old Dade that the ocean says hello. I'll tell him to take a dip. I don't think he would like that. Very He's not much of a swimmer. Would he I be know. okay? He would be fine. I don't understand why okay. he's so afraid. It's a disappointment. That's, a, that's interesting. I'll let him know that. <laughs> he gets a bit worked up about it, to be honest. Honestly, what has happened to my line? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm bringing back the tradition, I guess. 
and I am so proud of you because of it. I do mm. hope you become the biggest traveler. Well, I'm well on my way. I've been I seeing a lot of sights for you. Oh, oh, lovely. I wish I hadn't come empty handed myself. I, well, I suppose <laughs> you, you know, I didn't know that I was going to visit. I did. You came. And that's oh, all I wanted. Right. Ah. You have something very difficult coming up, I believe. Is it and related to the whole saving the world thing? It is. It yeah. Is. Because yeah, so that, far. Go ahead. Uh, go on. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to say, so far, I, I do feel like I haven't been much help in that department. Like, I just saw my friend turn into a dragon made out of stars the other day. And then my other friend went and just visited God because he felt like it. And also, they apparently have a history. It's just, uh, um, and I'm just, I don't know how much you know about me. You see, you've been watching. I'm just a sailor is my thing. And like a business person. So, to be honest, uh, if you've got something that could help me out with the whole being a hero situation, uh, it wouldn't go amiss. Well, I could help you. I could do more if you wanted to forge a connection with me. Like, but for now, you see her flick her wrist. And this trident begins to appear in her hand. Yeah, yeah another trident. <laughs> it glows white. And if you look in your um, your loot section, I have given you a your wave breaker trident. We've added a bunch of stuff. Oh, it's a plus two magical weapon now. Yes, it is a plus two Ooh. magical weapon. You have tidal surge. Um, and Electric Fury as well, where you can, Ooh. on a on a critical hit, uh, a 19 or a 20 now, not just a 20, a 19 or a 20, uh, you can add another 2d6 lightning damage to something. Ooh. You also have... <laughs> some could be cool. <laughs> you also have the Blessing of Purity. So you are, your weapon is good against undead and fiends as well. Ooh. Uh, it's a whole spiel that I gave you there that you can read. Yeah, I see. Awesome. And it oh, will be a spiel. Whole spiel. <laughs> spiel. But spiel. Spiel. Ah, but I'm trying. <laughs> right over my head. <laughs> I um, get it. Um, it's a trident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's three spears. Yes, it so will also real. get stronger with you. <laughs> Dope. Ah, um, sick. Oh my god. This is fucking baller. Thanks, Grima. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my little minnow. And she comes over and gives you a hug. <laughs> I could bless I you with more, if you like. Oh, I mean, I, I, I never say no to blessings. W what do you mean like that? What do you got? What do you got for me? Do you have like is it you another wish? trident? You want another trident? I oh, always oh, just more. that was just my idea. What were you thinking? Well, you do not feel up to scratch with the rest of your party. I mean, not exactly. Why? Well, they've got all sorts of like cool magical abilities and everything, and you know, I'm. I've never been much for the magic stuff myself. You know, I tried when I was younger, but it was... Would you like you to know, be? What, just like that? I'm, I'm not good at, like, studying. I get distracted really easily, and I uh, I just, I can't remember. The, I write the rooms down all wrong. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm better at hitting things. Well. Wow. How about this? You say to me that you will come and visit me more often and be my champion and I will give you 
magic. Well, I mean, mm. that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. When, Wonderful. When you say visit, when you say visit you, it's not just like this specific spot, right, that I went in. It's just like your whole ocean. Anywhere in my ocean. This seems pretty but if doable. You like i might be able to visit you in other ways once oh you accept this and there is a little ball of seaweed eat this uh, well you know i uh my other grandparents are not living and honestly i always uh like the idea of being cooked for by a grandparent so uh cheers <laughs> honestly it tastes like saltwater taffy um mm. it's really good it. and as you eat this you feel this cool magical power begin to run through your veins and gilly um you may also take a level of warlock I was about to say, I just became a fucking warlock. You did. With zero thought put into it whatsoever. Yep. <laughs> With zero thought th put into oh, it. Oh, yes. Um, and your casting <laughs> for this will be, we're going to we're gonna mess around with this a bit, but I okay. believe your, your strength, right? So we're going to, like, when you do Eldritch Blast and stuff, it'll be strength-based. Um, dope. You just got decent. Hadoken people. Well, we can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Dope. <laughs> So we'll Fantastic. we'll go through this and we'll actually work something out and find a pr a proper like thing for you, but uh, you have just become the daughter of the Andas. All right. The Andas Ocean. Gilly's getting a lot of complicated relationships like everybody else. I told you. <laughs> I told you it would happen. <laughs> Just <sighs> casually making deals with Archface, no big deal. Yeah, just, not even I. I just want to let you know that you unironically are going to be the first person to say I cast fist. <laughs> uh -huh. And it's going to be And accurate. totally mean it. Because yeah. you're a strength caster. Yeah. Can I, can, can I make yeah. a spell for Gilly? That's yes, fist. you can. It's going to be punching someone from across the room. A thousand Yay! percent. Yeah, I mean, that's that what could... your your Eldritch Blast looks like. A giant fist coming out and just flying into someone's face. It's just it's just oh, Eldritch it? Fist. Eldritch Fist. Yeah, you. We're that's gonna we're gonna is. we're gonna homebrew this for you, and it's gonna be Amazing. epic. Uh <laughs> We're going to come up with a whole bunch of shit for you to do. Um, 2d10 yeah. force damage. Okay. I was on the on the DL, like, I totally did not think this through. Uh, I was like, <laughs> oh, you know what? She would want to keep you around. Let's make a deal. Do you know when you what? Said that, I, almost, I literally was thinking about the other day. I wonder if I should message Jess and see if Gilly should maybe take some Warlock, because that could be kind of interesting. Well, you do. So, <laughs> you do <Great>. it. <laughs> We're on board. Her, right. her. Okay, cool. Um, there, I think we'll take our five minute. Hold on, come back. I just realized there's a question I should ask. Hey, come yes. on. Yes, you my didn't... little minnow. Yes, uh, you didn't drown my friends, did you? No, <laughs> okay, they are I'm looking checking. for you. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Back. Meanwhile, cool. back just at the wanted surface. to make sure. That Meanwhile, awkward. Damn it! I knew I should have bought that helmet that let us breathe underwater. <laughs> God, we get get Where is she? Her. I Where know she, she can breathe underwater though, so it's okay, right? Are you she, sure? She just something sucked. took her. Maybe she's she trying just... to kill her. Maybe are you it's those sure things in the, took her? In, the, in, the, in the river. I think so. Why else would she get down there? Well, what maybe she just went for a swim. That was way too quick to be a swim. I don't think I was just no. make, playing the worst prank on you ever. Yeah. yeah, they're panicking as they're like in the water diving, <laughs> trying to find you. Uh, <laughs> and we'll take our five minutes and come, and we'll pick up with you two <laughs> with them playing. <laughs> what is this one? It was make. Let me make sure the sound was working because is the sound working? The picture didn't come back. Yeah, the picture oh didn't to come back for some reason, but it's all good. Okay, so. 
you and you and Phaser are now Panicking. in the water trying to find Gilly. You hear there's no blood, guys. right? So that's fine. <laughs> there's no blood. She can blood. breathe underwater. Every time I come back up from diving down and trying to find her, I'm just like, I should have bought that stupid helmet. <laughs> I knew I, was, I had it in my hand. I was like, am I going to need a helmet that lets me breathe underwater? And I was like, nah, I won't need. And now I need it and I don't have a helmet. You I literally have a party member that could do that. Right. If, if only, only she weren't the one who was gone. <laughs> Gilly! Just, yeah, keep... Gilly! Uh, you see, Faiza sticks her head under the water and just screams, Gilly! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, <laughs> this was supposed yeah. to be fun. I was trying to do good PR for the ocean. It's so good. It's so great. Um, <laughs> They're panicking and like, maybe it's like 15 minutes of this, by the way. <laughs> before. I'm just having my like nice, yeah. long mm-hmm. conversation. Yeah. And also, you know, bargaining yourself to a fae. Right. An arch fae. Right. This thing not have a, a lifeguard or anything. Like, I don't really know. Insane. Swim at your own risk. There's a sign. <laughs> it, there is. There's a sign that says, uh, "Swim at your own risk. Avoid the uh, nope ropes." And then underneath it says, <laughs> "It says uh, there are there are uh, avoid the floating noodles." <laughs> I thought should have looked at Anyone that. Anyone know what that sound says? It's a druidic. <laughs> it's a druidic. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> probably uh, fine. It's probably nothing. You get... She brings you back. Splash, splash. Oh, hey, guys. What? Are what? you enjoying the water? <laughs> no, we thought you were dead. What happened? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, Faisa. Faisa, been... don't cry. It's okay. <laughs> what happened? We have been <laughs> searching for you for 15 minutes. <laughs> ah, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, I just got like an unexpected. I guess I didn't get an unexpected visit. I went on an unexpected visit. A um, visit to who? My grandmother. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically what my reaction was. Apparently, uh, my great or you know, great 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 I don't remember how many she used. Grandmother um is this ocean. Well that's great. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I haven't had a grandma in years. Your grandma's the ocean. Okay. Like the yeah. God of the ocean, the the fay of the ocean, the or like Arch- Arch- your grandfather Arch- came and saw a real pretty piece of water and they shared a special hug. Hey, trust me. She's a really pretty piece of water. <laughs> like it, like she's about. my grandma, so <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm not gonna go into detail, but like I get it, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Are you there, I guess? Uh, all right. That's... Listen. I suppose I everybody's... don't to judge. Yeah, okay. And I don't know, I... apparently I can, like, see her more I was made out now. of clay. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I've got some weird shit now, too. <laughs> I was stuff that fell off and got weird a shit. sword out of it. Exactly. Gilly needs therapy. I think Gilly's in therapy. She's been using some buzzwords. <laughs> right? She definitely needs it though. I don't know. She just described her own grandma as I get it. I get it. Hey, you can totally well, she look at your grandparents was... and go, they were beautiful. She didn't know she was her grandma. Listen, first. listen, my grandfather was ripped. I was like, no nah, nah. Good job. Fair. And he All had right. hair. Fun behind the scenes fact, the first time that Jess sent me a picture of Ozio Noah, my immediate reaction was mommy. And it turns <laughs> out I was right. Just you were not grand- wrong. Grand- grand- yeah. It's close. Yeah. You were not wrong. Needs yeah. therapy. You said mommy and I was like, bet. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes, good prompt. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> mm. Uh, we're 
I'm going to stop it here while you guys are together. And I'm going to just, just jump back over to, <laughs> to a rev. Uh, standing in front of you is Lindsay. Yes. Cash is watching you with big wide eyes, her dice falling all over the floor. I've been there. So you just came to purchase someone for the night? Say it like that. No. Um it's funny that you mentioned that, but I and I'm sorry if it's an insult. I, I didn't come here to spend any money. I came here out of hope. And uh, maybe that's not an emotion that brings people through your doors that often. Um, (laughs) But I I was looking for someone in particular, Lindsay. I got word from well, it doesn't it doesn't matter who told me, but I and Arev like looks back around and kind of looks at Cash and looks She's at still watching and... you. I'm looking for Amelia. <laughs> What? It's about time. And then from across the room, from where Cash is, you hear. Did did you finally figure it out? Wait, did I finally figure what out? You don't, you don't know? Uh, I <laughs> maybe I'm missing something here. Um, because no, I I I don't know. Uh, give me an insight check on cash. Sure. Uh, that is a 26. Her heart is breaking when you say that. It looks like... Oh, with a 26, she was so excited that you had finally come to find her. I <laughs> this is this was Cash's reaction. Yeah. Uh with a 26 I'll give you Lindsay's as well. Uh and there was a moment of um I'd say anger for a second. Not it. Not directed di- not directly directed at you. Um <laughs> But more that you didn't know, you didn't understand why you should be here. And then upset that Cash was hurting. She looks like she's more concerned with Cash's feelings right now. Um, Arev looks back and forth between the two of them. And says, what am I? No, no, what am I missing? Because clearly, clearly I, I'm missing something that I, I shouldn't be. 
some memory or because you two seem to know who I am far better than I know who you are. You're a knight. Of course we know who you are. Lindsay? Yes, love. For Cash's sake, let's not play any more games, okay? Why don't you come and sit down? Why don't Cash. you t- Why don't you tell me what name I should be using for it? either of you? Well, you know our names. I am Lindsay, and that is Cash. Then who was Amelia? Come, sit, have a drink. We will talk. And she slides an arm around, like, behind your shoulders. Come. I, I, I go, but I refuse the drink. Winter's like, oh, can, should I just, I'll just stay here, uh, I guess, or I could, I could come. Um, there is someone making their way over to him, and he's looking at you like, please don't leave me here. Winter. Go oh, thank God. Here. And he fully like runs after you and sits like he's like so close to you like oh my god i don't think i should be here cash is she comes over with a bottle of wine and sits down uh there are drinks put out in front of all of you except her she sits it's it's nice to see you again I mean, I feel the same way. Although, I feel like maybe you have seen me far more than just the times when I've seen you. She gives you a little soft smile. Her eyes, you notice, have that little bit of that that glow of magic that is starting, that, that blue magic that all of them have. Can I ask you a personal question? Of course. What why are your eyes starting to change color? You see uh, Lindsay sort of almost hold back a laugh and Cash starts to go a little bit red and uh, Lindsay will answer the question and go, because she is becoming... Mature. But the same thing doesn't happen to the rest of the residents of the city. No. So why, why is it localized the rest here? Of the, the rest of the residents of the city are not fate touched. We are born of Amelia. I I'm sorry. <laughs> um, all of you are born of Amelia. Yes. So how, what is my part in all of this? Oh, well, I suppose you would be her last lover, would you not? 
I I don't know um, if I was her last. Well, I mean, not here. Well, here anyway, I suppose. Where is... What is she? Well, she is a fae. She was not supposed to be here. But every now and then she escapes from the godlands and comes back to Thon. Before being caught by Beloth and being sent back. I think of her as a... Akin to a succubus, in a way. I, I turn from Lindsay to Cash and I say am I assuming too much or are you are you here because of me? You see this grin kind of break out in her face and she goes, I really was hoping you would understand more when you came here. But I've been waiting for you a very long time, Papa. Oh, maybe. You, sounds like you've been waiting for me to be aware for a very long time and yeah. I Ash it was not left up to me the decision to to know who you are that that was never in my hands it was taken from me by your mother i know and it was taken from me by everybody else in my life who who knew who you were who never I told know. me i know i ripped many bags so that we could talk And I always picked them up, didn't I? Yeah, you did. I just wanted to know you. Arev sits forward and he holds out his hands across the the space. She puts your, her hands in yours, like, um, immediately. I am so sorry. It's not your fault. I, I know. I, I know why I've been hidden. No, Cash. No, I am sorry because even now, after having met you, I am somehow trying to find an excuse. I am trying to fix with the words the fact that I wasn't there for you. And I, you are deserved so much more than that. So, I'm not going to give you an excuse. I wasn't there for you, and I know nothing will ever make up for the time that I've lost. 
Papa, if anyone knew that I was fate touched, I would be sent to the Godlands. It's okay. Actually, I don't, uh, Lindsay. Yes. I don't know what kind of rules you have in this place, but um, would you be so against me taking Cash for a walk outside of the building? She looks at Cash. Cash looks at her like, please, ma like, please, like, this is her older sisters. Please, please. Go. You may, you may go. Hey. And take your bag. And you see Cash go, one, one minute. And she runs up some stairs, disappears, and comes back with a fairly large, uh, almost cylindrical sack. Okay. That she slings over her back. Okay. All right. Um, let's, just, let's just go for a little walk. Okay. Yeah. I is she well, she's beside you in seconds at the door. I'm I'm here. Um Winter. Yeah. Can I ask you another favor? Oh god, yep. Follow us. Oh thank you so much. Yeah. And he gets off immediately. <laughs> Just make sure we are not followed. I can do that. Yeah, I'm. I can definitely do that. All right. And, he hangs uh, back. Thank you. And I, I stride off. Is is it getting close to nighttime? Yeah. Okay. So it's I'd probably like about to, five o'clock. Um, I would like to take cash. Um up so um as many letters as i can climb getting towards the upper canopy um you're on the upper canopy they're right at the top i i i want to go to like like the top the top like above the tree line nothing but like a sea of for a sea of jungle okay, and okay, forest okay. below us and an empty dusk sky above us so you go you weave through the city and you go to a place where you know that there is an upper platform, uh, like a sky deck. It's mainly people like to go and sunbathe or just watch the sky. It's fairly empty at the moment. Fairly? <laughs> All right, there are you. a few people. But they're... One one kid is sitting with his feet hanging over the edge. You know, they're just kind of chilling. Uh, I, I think I'd like to turn to Cash and just say, one second. And then I approach each and every individual. And I just ask them, like, do you mind if I have a moment? Um... I have to have a very important discussion and I would just um if you could please like take this and for each of them I hold out uh five gold. <laughs> sure. A hundred percent. They all take your gold and they, they clear out. Uh so how much uh how many people were there? I'll say you go down about twenty five gold. Okay. I'm just gonna get rid of that perfect removed okay um so i just i pay them each and i say like thank you for your understanding uh i'm sorry for disturbing your evening this is for you um have a wonderful night and i wait for them all to leave and i wait until it's basically just me cash and a distant winter Winter's down a couple, like a platform. Oh, okay. He did not come up with you. Let's 
So Arev walks to the edge of the platform. Where I, I'm assuming there's like some sort of railing, like the legs were dangling, but maybe there's like like a handrail or something. Yeah, there's like wooden a wooden railing. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So I he leans with his back against the railing and just So, you knew all those times that you dropped things. We. Oui. Was somebody stopping you from saying something to me? A few people. Ash, how much do you know about our family? I know more about Emilia than I do about your family. Though I do, I have picked up some. I know that I know about your mothers. I have met them once or twice. They don't know who I am. But they seem very nice. They are. They're the, um, they're the kind of parents that I wish you had a chance to have yourself. I, I knew that I would have you one day, so it's okay. You came, Papa. And I wasn't alone. I had no. I had my brothers and my sisters. Yes. I have some really bad news. What? You don't... <laughs> you hear, you don't want me? <laughs> no, that's not the kind of... Bless you. No. That's probably more. I have bad allergies. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no, Cash, that's not... That's not what I mean by bad news. Um, <laughs> well, it's ruining the gravitas. It's Whatever. okay, it's okay. Um, Cash, have you maybe recently, maybe your whole life, have you noticed... Any abilities? Things maybe suddenly got easier? Papa, I'm fate touched. Everything is easier. <laughs> um, I would like to ask you a favor. Oh, okay. You, you're fate touched. Right? Yes. So that means you can do what I can do? Yes. And I hold out my hands, and in the palm of my hand, I blossom Would you let me blossom uh, a Stella Bella? Yes. Okay, because I know that it's a rare plant, but I'm also in the middle of Thawne. I will let you do it. Okay. You also have a god inside of you. <laughs> okay. 
just because I, I know that earlier in the campaign, like it was like a quest to go get one of these flowers. So if I could just like drew and craft one, like that's like a. I will, I will allow it to happen now. Power creep. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Uh, so I have one of these uh, powerful flowers bloom in my hand from effectively nowhere. And I say, repeat after me. <laughs> you she looks at your flower and it's it's small it's like a it's it's a smaller cellabella and she goes and she goes and she makes you almost a bouquet of them okay um How how much magic do you have? I have a decent amount. I will have more soon. Soon? Well, at a certain age, my eyes will change and I will be able to siphon magic off of energies and stuff <clears throat> and is this is this how you look all the time this is your natural appearance yes well yes yes inside the eyes yeah you can insert her okay Uh, 28. 28. She's, she can change it if she wants to, but this is what she looks like. And she, she has dark skin, a dark, like a, a darker skin than you do, but you get the idea, you get the idea that it's because she's always out in the sunlight. She's just very tanned. Um, her eyes will change and are in the process of doing that. So why, why in your opinion do you think people were keeping you a secret? Veloth would make me go to the Godlands. I wouldn't let her. You, I don't think would be able to stop her. And I would much rather rip my bags and trip to meet you than be taken away or have you hurt no sorry um maybe you i mean it's been a while since i've been home so maybe it's been a while um so you didn't understand what i meant i don't mean that i would try to not let her. I mean that if Beloth ever tried to take you away from me, I mean I would actively make sure that I was the one who killed her. Papa, this is going a bit far, I think. Very dramatic. I understand that you are having a very hard time adjusting to the fact that you have, like, a 16-year-old daughter, but, um... Killing the god uh, that keeps us alive? I mean, it's, it's a bit, bit much. That's... I mean, only if I don't have her replacement. Okay. So, are we... Uh, Daddy? This went from, like, a, a meeting I've been waiting to for a very long time to blasphemy. I... <laughs> Uh, oh, no, it gets far, far worse, my dear. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I, I have literally met Beloth. Okay. She doesn't think that highly of me. Why not? 
I don't know. But there was this one time that I was in a room with her and she ignored me for about three hours while she dealt with all of my friends. I was literally right, stand- the NPC around. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. You left that in my MO. <laughs> uh, there was this one time I was standing there in the corner of a room and she flat out refused to acknowledge me or couldn't for hours while she was dealing with some pretty heavy stuff with all of my friends uh, oh. until... I don't quite frankly, I thought it was quite funny uh, for about an hour and a half. And when it was about, I don't know, the two or three hour mark, I decided to finally speak up and she kind of just dealt with and, oh, you're here. It was quite um, humbling. I mean, she she is the goddess. I'm sure she has many things on her mind. <clears throat> not really she's oh, actually okay. she's, she's more laser focused um i'm surprised i mean of every god i've ever met um Beboth seems to be the least mm, what's the term when you can focus on many things at one time um, um like omnipotent perhaps or no, nah, that's just, I wouldn't even give her omnipotence. I just mean like she's not really great at multitasking. Okay. Uh and you have met many gods? A few. Oh. Um so, uh, the, I mean this is a fun one. Uh just wait, hang on a second. And he like closes his eyes and <laughs> attempts to call out to Vara. Give me a religion check. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Yeah, can I guidance myself? You can guidance yourself. Sweet. Okay. Okay. So uh that is an 18. An 18. What are you saying, Devara? I, I say, Vara, I know this is a very weird ask and you don't always like to show up, um, but just let me borrow a tiny burst of your power for a brief moment, please and thank you. <laughs> My power is your power, Harev. With that being said, I'd like to put on a summer display. Okay. So, I am at the top of the canopy. And I would like to... Look at her and say... I think part of the reason fate kept us apart is so that you didn't know that until now I have part of one inside of me and he like borrows the essence of Vara and as he like scatters um, his arm to the right, some like warm summer airs start trilling off his hands and I I would like to try and conjure like a swarm of fireflies. I'll do you one better. As you wave your arm to the side, you feel your veins begin to feel hot, like fire, like the warm summer heat that begins to overtake you. Um, flowers that shouldn't bloom on the trees begin to spread all across the canopy. Um, 
these fireflies begin to appear and almost dance and blink and sway as stars in the night sky. Uh, a gust of warm air begins to encircle you and your eyes become this lime green that Varas are. And she looks at you. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure you did not have this power like five seconds ago. Um, this this both is mine and isn't. But the reason that I wanted to show this to you is because I need you to understand something that I have come to know recently. But I'm going to give you an opportunity right now that before I share this with you, it, that if this is too much, I will stop talking about it. And I will just do everything in my power to make sure that you have a comfortable life with me present, living however you'd like to. Okay, Papa. So it's it's your choice. Um, I'm here and I would love to share more of this story with you and your involvement with it. But if you don't want to do that, then I... I will simply be there for you as often as I can now. But it's it's your choice. What is it? It is almost time for there to be a new eldest druid. I had heard she was sick, yes. But there has been a, um, a foretelling, or maybe a trick of fate. I hesitate to call it a prophecy, but there are three, three young women in the city whose fates are bound together. Oh, okay. Instead of one. I I am not following, Papa. I'm sorry. I don't mean to upset you. I just don't know where this conversation is going, and I'm very confused. I I walk forward. And as I walk forward, I begin to take on my starry form. Okay. And I'm going to take on my starry form of the chalice. So my my whole body becomes iridescent, uh, translucent almost, and vibrant with that beautiful um, and you become blue, a cup? blue white starshine. And the, the cup tattoos on my okay. palms <laughs> okay. begin to illuminate. And as I walk forward my skin becoming this like cosmic roiling force and my eyes going from that beautiful green, which normally would become this like vibrant luminescent silver, um, instead become a uh, metallic hot, um, glowing green, um, because of Vara's influence. 
And I walk forward and I just gently lay my hand on the side of her cheek. She leans into it. And I say, for all of the power that I possess, that is left within me, that either I have earned or I have been born with or I have been gifted, all of it pales compared to the one good thing that I did without ever being aware of it. And then that's that you are here. She's got tears that start streaming down her face and she lurches forward and arm wraps her arms around your your waist, buries her head in your chest. I, I I'm wrap, so happy that you finally came, Papa. I wrap one arm around her back and the other I pull up and cradle against the top of her head. And I just gently start moving my fingers through her hair along her head. And I say, I'm sorry that I wasn't here so long, kiddo. <laughs> You're here now, and that's what matters. And I will be by your side as often as I can, my eldest druid. Okay. Um, I am very overwhelmed right now, and I don't think I am understanding your words properly. And she gets back and starts wiping her tears a little bit, kind of composing herself. Okay. <clears throat> Can I... Mm, this is... Okay. So... Ms. DM. Yes. I have an ability that I have had from the moment that uh, our my character was created, thanks to you. Uh-huh. Um, I've used it maybe a couple of times successfully during the entire campaign. Okay. It's kind of an attack. Okay. But I'm Asking to implement it um, for the second time, I think, in a non-lethal display. This oh, is you my. You want to use the star? You want to do the stars? This is my goddess's boon of Vara's visions, and with my daughter here amongst all of the magic that I've cast and everything that I've been telling her with her in my arms, I'd like to pull back and just lightly rest my fingers above her eyebrow, press them down so that now both of her, both of my hands are on either side of her head. And I say, If you don't understand, then let me gift you for a moment to see what I see. And I lean forward and just kiss her gently on the forehead as I erupt Vara's visions into the skies and the heavens above us and bring the night sky for a moment into the sky so she can see. Uh, she is completely lost in it there's just wonder on her face as she looks up I was, this is beautiful thank, thank you for showing me this so you like really have a god inside of you <laughs> so I like really have a god inside of me yes just like you really have some sort of fractured spirit of the, the eldest druid inside of you. And we're sure about that. 
Pretty damn. Yeah. There's never been a, a fate touched Elvis Druid. I mean, there's never been a goddess touched human before that I know of. A lot of things have been changing. Do you know who? Who else? I've met at least one of them, yes. Are they going to like me? Sweetheart, I don't think I've ever met anybody in my life who wouldn't like you. There's this grin that she can't, like, keep off her face. I, c I will do my best. This is my home. Wait! You're related to the Eldest Druid? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, um... <clears throat> See, that, that was a shock. And having a daughter wasn't? No, that was also a shock, but, um... I... I don't think... Okay, this is going to sound really weird to say. That's okay. You can dump it on with all of the other weird things you have been saying. Yeah. No, but like this is like personal for us. So like, just give me a moment. Um, you are only 16, right? Yes, just. So there I may not have known of you with my mind but for the last 16 years I think I've known about you in my heart and so it's not that it was less of a shock to find out that I uh, I had a daughter as much as it when the mental block was cleared when I was finally allowed to know who you were it just It, it was immediate. She Knowing... looks really just pleased. Knowing that I loved you was immediate. She hugs you really tightly again. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. This is the best birthday present I have ever gotten. <laughs> Wait, it's your birthday today? It was a couple days ago. I... Well, that just can't stand. Now I need to go buy you a gift. No, this is the best gift. No, 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 no. Material gifts only on your birthday. <laughs> if, okay, we could go shopping. But before we do. I have a gift for you. Please tell me it's my life. <laughs> I don't think I can give you that. Uh, I mean, as long as you don't take it, I think we're good. I, where am I going? To, what? No. Daddy. <laughs> I have something left to you from Momer. Oh. And okay. she hands you that long sack that she's slung over her shoulders. Go. Cool. What is this? Open it. 
Okay. But careful, it bites. Okay. I, uh, She's got a shit eating grin on her face. I, I, I pull it I, at a distance, pull out the strings. At a distance, you pull out the strings, you open the bag, and slowly re- reveal a richly polished wooden longbow uh, with ornamented, ornamented with silver trim and bowstrings that glimmer softly with reflected moonlight. Um, it's a blessed bow from, uh, from Vara and it's Emilia's bow. Uh, you, with this bow, you can create an arcane arrow that when you draw it back, uh, you, you don't have to knock an arrow. You can just draw it back, draw back the string and one will appear for you. Uh, when you fire the bow, Using one of those arcane arrows, it's a plus two to attack and damage rolls. Um, it also de- deals force damage instead of piercing damage. You also, uh, again, with the, the D6 for fiends and undead. Additionally, you can use it as a plus two, uh, plus two um, arcane focus. So spell attack rolls and DCs for your druid and ranger spells or any uh, kind of those like nature spells are higher as well as your healing stuff you can as well um and eventually you will get a plus a plus three weapon through it and spell casting focus wow um when you decide to use the the uh bow to um cast healing things you can roll an extra d6 and add that to the number as well wild and i'll Uh, post that in your little place for you you have amelia's bow do you like it i as i run my hands along the bow i just look over and I say, yes, but she, she was trust sad me. to leave you, you know, and us. Cash of this bow is amazing, and I, I'll never stop going over the workmanship that or the magic that's been inscribed in this but when I tell you that it's definitely second of the gifts that have entered my life today oh yes nothing is good as having more family but oh I, I was talking about I had this really good chili cheese dog earlier I mean, oh okay well, then perhaps you can take me for dinner there. <laughs> no, of course I mean you, kiddo. I took very good care of it. I can see that. Thank you for taking very good care of yourself, too, when I couldn't. Lindsay and... My other brothers and sisters, they took very good care of me. I was never hungry. I always had everything I wanted. I was never alone. Save for when I decided to escape sometimes and and rip my bag. You what? Yeah, when I would run away and rip my bag so that uh so that this very nice knight would come and help me pick up all my things. Uh, oh, oh, those times. Yes. Well, I'm grateful that you did. Is there anything you'd like from me before I walk you back? 
Another hug. I can do that. And, and you will come back and visit me? Of course. And, and, and I would like to meet my grandmas. <laughs> we can do that too. Um, have you, you haven't had much of an opportunity to go to the school around here either, right? No, I, I'm not really supposed to be out much in that kind of setting. I, I don't want to draw attention to myself as, as a fate touched. Well, I mean, your dad has a very unique take on druidic magic. And then he holds up his, like, still glittering hands. It's good. In case you didn't notice. It's a very pretty take. But uh, maybe you can take a look. Uh, I'll ask my moms. I, around when I was your age, um, I did a lot of journaling. And in those journals is when I first started taking steps towards this ability and this belief and uh, that there was something else out there. Some stars in, in a sky that should exist that didn't. Um, and I've never really shared that knowledge with anybody, but I, if you'd like it, Maybe I can teach you to be like me. The first. Yes. To be like yes. me. Yes. I I would love that. Yes. Especially if I get to glitter very prettily like you do. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a blessing and a curse. Uh, it's very pretty, but people can see you coming from like miles away. So it's not. That's okay. Uh, I would love to be able to sparkle like this. No, then I would love to teach you. You know she's still alive, yes? If you wanted, you could cast a sending and, and say something to her. I do sometimes. I will, maybe someday. But um, for now, I'm happy talking to the member of my family that stayed. Come, I have a dress that I would like to buy. <clears throat> and you said I could have a, a, pre a present. So. I did. Although, is the store going to be open this late? No, we will go another day then. I mean, if it's not too much trouble, maybe I just come back tomorrow. I am available all the time. Then I'll come I don't you. actually work yet. So that, that's good. I told but you, it, they take very good care of me. I just, I mean, if you did end up working there uh, in a few years, you know, like 10, uh, I I, I would still, I would still support you. Maybe I, 15. Papa, I will have to at some point because I need to eat. I'm just saying there are plenty of jobs out there. Okay. um, But I eat the magic. What? So, you know... I eat, it's not that I take it, it's that we create it, and then I eat it, and I feel sustained. Or that's what's supposed to happen? I have not done it yet. My eyes have not changed. So for now, you still eat normal food? Yes, I will always eat normal food. It's just that you kind of need something extra when you're fate touched. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. I could go for ice cream. So tomorrow, ice cream, meeting your grandparents, buying a dress, teaching you magic. This sounds like the best day ever. <sighs> sounds like the happiest headache I'll ever have. I'm going to give you many headaches. And I'm very happy to do so. It's already started. <laughs> she hugs you. Obviously, I hug her back. Okay, but my curfew is is soon. Well, let's get you back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> She'll go back Winter. when you go down the stairs. When you go down the stairs, Winter's Winter's just kind of like leaning off a, a balcony watching everything he's like oh uh everything good i i <laughs> wave a glowing hand at him and i go yeah okay why are we glowing are we fighting things no you've okay. seen me do this yeah not often when you're not going to attack someone or heal someone so did someone get hurt he's still leaving by the way um me kind of are you okay? He's like looking at Cash. He's looking at you. He's kind of suss out what's happened. Well, it's more. It's more like a, a, yeah. Just need to sleep on it. Papa. Papa. Hmm. What's this? And Cash is eyeing Winter up and down. This is Winter. Nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you too. He's very handsome, Papa. Okay. <clears throat> yes, I, I I know, sweetheart. Uh... You're, gonna, you're you good? Like, can I go? F I'm gonna fly somewhere. Actually, uh, do you mind dropping her back off at home? You are you move a lot faster than I do. Oh, sure, I could do that. Um, and he'll. Come here, Cash. And she's immediately like, hi. And he, okay. And he just picks her up and takes off into the air. And she's like, what? Oh, you're so strong. You can fly. And uh, fully has like schoolgirl crush on him as he's like, yeah, I can. It's, it's, so did you have, the last thing you hear is, did you have a good time with your father? <laughs> as he brings her home. And uh, I think that's where we'll end the session. Uh, GG. <laughs> um, and and we'll pick up next week from that. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, I'm I sneeze stars. Thank you for being here, everybody. I have been your shenanigan sovereign. Uh, Arev, who have you been? Arev, James. <laughs> Arev, James. <laughs> I love the fact that I I was so convincing that I just right? become my character. Um, <clears throat> hello, internet. Um, <laughs> I, I tonight have been <clears throat> Arab Desark, the slow talking circle of stars human druid, uh, with a much deeper and slower cadence than I normally use for myself. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> As a person, though, um, you can find me as Mazrix or Mazrix24 pretty much anywhere on the internet. Um, most notably, our Discord. We're cool people. Come hang out with us. Um, there's going to be another link in chat Not for good. whoever's yeah. faster than me. Um, let's go to Caro. Hello, I'm Caro. I have been Gilly Galane, the barbarian and warlock of the party. Mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> you can find me mostly on TikTok at uh, Imaginary Caro. And that's it, I think. Right, Dan? <laughs> Is that it? I don't know. I think that's it. I don't know. It feels Wait. like it. Wait. Yes? I, there is something else that needs to happen. Wait, what? what? Hello! <laughs> <laughs> a special guest appearance. Special guest uh, star. A, a special little nod from the Moonstone Matriarchy game of 
whom we have uh, our, our, our resident player over here. Yes, so, come see come see Megan on uh, on Saturdays, and and for many future screams of Daniel, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Dan. You can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places, and yes, I do tech for the channel on that Saturday night game when I get yelled at a lot. I have been uh, Damascus Silver, the half elf bard warlock, who has been watching a great show tonight. It was fascinating. <laughs> Uh, we'll see you next week okay I love you bye bye